what she has to, what's her question, Rosemary? Okay. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the almost daily Patreon um, oh. <laughs> gifts that you give us. I oh, um, do you're look welcome. forward to that. And um, yeah. I had sent you an email about uh, your consciousness explanation, which um, okay. I've heard many times and the theory of it, um, I'm drawn to the theory of it and my practical mind, my rational mind wonders if you have some applications that you yeah. can offer that would like, for example, um, Joe Dispenza uses the breath to, and the muscles in the lower chakras to activate yep. the pineal gland. And do you have something like that that you can offer? Um, so let me ask you a question right back again. When you talk about the whole thing about consciousness, what aspect of that are you trying to get, make real for yourself? Come into, come into my multidimensionality. Okay. So, um, and I know you've talked about dreams and I am dreaming more, oh, good. but is there something um, besides that, that you can recommend? Um, okay, so let me say this, before you wanna fiddle with multidimensional existence, um, you really wanna fiddle with becoming totally present, okay? Because the task, as you evolve yourself further, is to um, collect all of that energy that you spun off in every direction because we create in a multidimensional way all the time in an unaware fashion. So the goal is to stop doing that and, and just focus your energy and gather all the energy back from all of those um, selves that you have imagined you were doing this or worried about doing that, those create selves. Doing those things and then they impact you and so you have to bring that back and integrate that. Um, it used to be called long ago soul retrieval and what they were really doing was collecting that little piece of energy back um, and making it work with you because we often, we um, we, and I was just dealing with this this morning, we project, we radiate out what we are. And then the pieces that we don't like, of course, are right there in front of us in that mirror of the self. Um, so to become, uh, oh, okay. Do you Did mean like empty mind? No, you don't want to be an empty mind. <laughs> no. I, you only, that's a common thing for meditation. You don't want to be empty minded except for that little short minute where you're clearing everything so you can ask a specific question. So you can ask a specific or get a specific kind of information. You don't want to walk around mindlessly all day. Um, that's not uh, functional. Um, and so the art of clearing your mind is so that you can do something or know something or experience something else. Maybe you want to create an imaginary experience and you, um, you know, you need to clear yourself so you can do that. But that's the reason for that. And somehow, um, I, I will say this, um, the more, <laughs> I was going to say the more better, that's not quite the right English, the more and better you can, um, come to this place of utter silence and, and peace and quiet within yourself, the more apt you are to experience the Godhead that you're made of. You go into the self, into the deep self. Um, and that's where you run into that source that, um, that I call mind space. Um, and it's just all these little, little lights well, twinkling lights, amazingly intelligent twinkling lights. So um, you might want to know that. So you have to like move away from all, um, I mean, if that's the goal, then you do want to become quiet and silent. Um, but sometimes you can't get to that quiet, silent place until you deal with all this crap out here and all your biases and all your worries and all your fears. 
So you, as soon as, and here's the rule of consciousness, so as soon as you get quiet, consciousness is going to bring up the next thing that you have to deal with. And if you just trust that, it'll clear your issues one by one in a perfectly organized way. It might not be the order that you would have tried to do it in, but it will do so in such a way that each thing that you clear has the most impact on everything else that you feel um, needs to be fixed or changed or altered or um, shifted in your life. So, so let me see if I can um, repeat what you said. Okay. I, I need to come back to myself. Yep. And totally um, present. Totally present. Tension. Set an intention and make it really general, like go into mind space and then let the energy clear as my system is ready to clear. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. And, and if you have issues that are in the way of entering into that, that immense, loving, peaceful silence, then that's what's going to come up. So go with that. When you get to the place that there's nothing left to he heal or fix within you, then you're going to you're you're going to stay in that place of utter silence uh, for a long time, and and go into that um, that amazing <laughs> that amazing Godhead. So um, my impression has been that the creation comes from the feeling. Yeah. Where yeah, does, does that fit, please? Feeling is energy. So if you get hit by a two by four on the side of the leg or the elbow or whatever, um, that's energy in motion. And, and that hurts. It's, it's just that simple. If you fall in love, that feels good. That is the energy of love. And so that, that it's all in the energy. Energy is consciousness and consciousness is energy. So and consciousness is the feeling aspect of energy. So you're going to interpret that energy that is flowing through you or that you're using or that somebody's using on you. And that's going to, you're going to interpret that as a feeling. And you will be taught how to interpret that so, you know, your culture, whatever it is, is going to say, this is not okay, this is bad, you should feel insulted about that or this or whatever. Um, so, um, when consciousness is in motion, you will have feeling. It's just that simple. Feeling it's is not important to choose it, just to let it arise? Uh, what do you mean, choose it? Choose the feeling? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, that actually, if I heard the question correctly, um, yes, you want to let that feeling, whatever it is, move right on through you and keep right on going. And then you try to learn something from it as it passes through. Why am I having that? What's that about? You know, what am I worried about? What am I thinking? What am I hoping? Uh, et cetera. Those are all, um, they are mental activities associated with feeling. And we all do that all the time. So the mental actually follows the feeling. Feeling comes first, mental is next. So, and if you, um, if, um, let me see. Um, let me use the example of children. If you are working with children, whether you're a teacher um, or a mother, or you have a neighborhood full of kids and they're always around, et cetera. Um, there's certain behaviors that you're going to um, target and try to watch or try to change, et cetera. Um, you can deliberately try to shift people uh, in that way, but, but you really should examine yourself first. You know, is that really important? Is what I want that child to do or to become really necessary? What does a child need? Why does a child need to do that? Um, and so you end up, there's so much work that, that we each need to do. It took me forever. 
I'm still working. Let me put it this way. You never really quit that, but it took me 17 years of intense um, introspection and studying. Where's that feeling coming from? Is that how I want to respond? Because um, I had foot and mouth disease so often for those 17 years. Um, whoops, let me say that again. Whoops, no, that's not quite right. Please forgive me while I practice on you that I'm trying to revise who and how I am in, and the way that I respond. And I literally would say that to people. Um, and so, you know, it, and it was, it worked. It, it does work. The other thing you can do is replay something in your mind 20 times after it's already said and done and then you can maybe hit on just what you should have said. And I will say that when you do that, when you hit on the one thing that you should have said, it changes that past. It changes the feeling in the person you were dealing with and it changes yourself as well. I believe that. Um, it's amazing how that works. So, um, so I'm not sure. What is your goal? Let me ask you, what is your goal with this whole consciousness thing? To evolve, to, um, okay. to um, open myself as much as I can safely. And, yep. um, so, so could I make a suggestion maybe? Sure. And if it fits, you can wear it. Um, Pick a something, pick an exotic skill or that's considered exotic, like telepathy or um, always knowing the weather or, um, you know, being able to always draw something to yourself. Um, little things, you know, one of my students was a long time ago said, I want somebody to bring me one cup of coffee every day. <laughs> and and so that was the goal and he just radiated that and by god it started to happen and to, he finally said okay i don't want any more coffee <laughs> you know um and i went on to practice something else um practice something that uh develops some of those intuitive skills your clairvoyance your clairaudience your clairsentience um, practice going for a walk and looking along the sidewalk or the pathway and being able to either smell or taste and feel the effect of some plants along the, the walk. And just because that's Claire Gustin's, the ability to know what something's going to taste like and what effect it will have in the body or stop and, and you know, practice talking with plants. So those are some of the things that are. I did have will... an interesting experience this past week. One of the things that I've missed in the um, global reset is my chorus singing. That raises oh. energy in me like yeah. uh, orgasm does. Yeah. And so last oh week, I wrote it in my journal. Um, okay. Bring this back to me. <laughs> Two days later, someone invited me to sing with a group, oh, and wow. um, I don't know how it happened, though. You know, I. Um, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna I say, and I, I say do. this frequently: the universe is listening. It yeah. wants a relationship with you, so ask for what you want. Write it down because the writing is the action. The thinking, I want to sing. I want to. I want that to come back to me. That's the thinking, the consciousness piece. The writing is the action. That's why I bug people all the time. Write it down. Um, there are other things you can do besides write it down, but you must make a symbolic gesture, physical action that makes that conscious thought or wish or desire manifest. It sets things in motion. So that's very, very important. Congratulations. That is absolutely wonderful. So, um, okay, let's go on to somebody else. Who's um, next so here? The next person is Deborah, but somebody, Susan and Justin asked very briefly in the chat box, what is the difference between empty and silence? And that's something you hear often a lot of people refer to. And then it's um, Deborah. Okay, silence is... Um, is uh there's not much difference at all okay 
So um, they're almost identical. Silence has a little more feeling to it. Empty is you become, how do I, um, you, be, you, um, you become not there. You, you can't hardly feel yourself. You, you, you just become not there. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it. Um, so, but peace or silence, um, the observer self is still uh, sometimes in action. Um, I remember reading about um, Yogananda's experience in which he realized something profound about the nature of reality. And I think he was meditating up in a cave or something like that. And all of a sudden, he could see the entire world. And I forget how long it lasted. He could see what was happening in town <clears throat> on the street. Um, he knew, and those states are very, um, they, they will change you right to the core. Um, but those, that's a moment when silence with a, a, a touch of intention may trigger a state of consciousness in which you become all knowing, all seeing. Um, and all powerful. The thing to remember is that when you become all seeing and all knowing, you very often forget about the power because you don't need it right then. The power is the power to know, to see. Um, and so that's the, the main difference. Okay. So I hope that's a clear enough answer. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. So I taught all weekend. And so I, it's today, I was like, <clears throat> all day today. So forgive me. <coughs> so Deborah, you're next. Deb? Yeah, Deb, go ahead. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. And um, I came prepared with this question because I was told I had to ask it. So Okay. <laughs> um, Very good. I, now, this, I had a uh, dream two months ago and it came back up again just before the class this week. Okay. Um, that I had to ask about this, but it's a dream I analysed and I was able to analyse it at a physical level, but there's a frequency level that has to be interpreted and I need support okay. in interpreting it. Okay. So um, very high level, very brief. Um, I'm building a new house. I'm on the scaffolding yep. on the upper platform looking down through a centre void in a spherical home, um, or a, a cyl okay. cylindrical home. And you can see down level by level, and every level I can see the spinning ge geometries, either at the physical level or just after yesterday's class, I could see it at the frequency level. When yeah. I get down to about the solar plexus level, there's um, a field of nothing, like an expansive field. It's just all white light. There's yep. a yellow picket boundary fence. Within the boundary fence, there's a hypercube spinning on its axis. And with the inner side, I can see a chrysalis within the um, hypercube, which is shaped like a, a bean, a bean, okay, or bean. Um, so I've come down through, I'm building a new body. I've come down through the crown. I'm looking at this chrysalis inside this spinning hypercube within a fence, um, a picket yep. fence. It's the fence and the chrysalis are both blood plasma colour, that ochre yellow. The okay. hypercube is translucent silver white. Um, like intelligent metal. The chrysalis is, the bean shape of the chrysalis in the plasma colour is impressed like with motherboard computer circuitry. Um, and okay. there's a sentience within the bean uh, or within the chrysalis. It's understood that it is a seed pod. So the hypercube actually feels like a tesseract or a time portal at the okay. physical level. But it's the hypercubes come up again in a meditation last week and it said, and it was basically um, a meditation that I'm in a project meeting. We're preparing to do work um, following that uh, the theme of living is forever book. You know, the ap apocalypse oh. has happened. We're in a project team doing all the work. Jodie and I are in it, who's, who's a person I actually work with on um, regularly. And they re it said, record this dream. That's why you've been given the hypercube because Jody, Jody then also dreamt about the hypercube okay. and it's come into the frequency work we're doing. Okay. So I hope that's not too complex, but it's the hypercube is the main thing. Okay. So the hypercube is going to spin 
depending yeah, on the frequency yeah. and the set of frequencies. Um, mm. Hyper, just that, the fact that it's called a hypercube means that it is, um, I'm gonna say operational at a frequency mm -hmm. level that is not human. Mm. And it's, it's hyper, it's way above yeah. where the human normally operates. Um, mm. uh, well, I don't want to scare you. Just be aware that mm. you are, all of us here, all humans are kind of attuned to the planet and the, and the mm. sun and the stars. And, and it's a, there's a confluence of energies here. And what you are doing is building mm. another body that is ready for a different location in space and time. Mm. And it's uh, at a different frequency. It's a higher frequency. Um, the cube mm. is the symbol. Um, if, if, you, if you rotate a cube, you get this amazing set of plasma vortices, mm. especially if you rotate it at a, a, an angle. Okay, right. so okay. Um, those plasma vortices are what set up new chakras in your system and prepare mm. you to take in enough energy to be able to make that that leap. Okay. So yeah, um, that makes sense. And yeah. the, the seed pod within it was like a sentient seed. Nope. That's you. Um, of another life. That's yeah. you. That's a, you're a seed. <laughs> yep. You're becoming okay. another creature altogether. Um, right. Okay. See, this was triggered in yesterday's class, um, the creation yeah. of the new self, I think. And it brought this question up. Okay. Um, yeah. It seems connected because we're doing mag uh, work with the earth's magnetic poles at the moment. And, um, yep. the person I work with, we're in basically come into the dipole configuration with, and we're creating that dipole moment, which yep. I was guided to look up the NOAA site and look at the declination maps again. So mm. we're, we're in the dipole moment, which equates yes, to the reversal of the Earth's magnetic fields, which is basically a 1300 year window. But we're yeah. in that moment and with the tilt of the axis, this is actually a, a part of what's coming out of this work that we're doing at the, yep. at the magnetic poles. And it seems like yeah. the spinning of the void in the center okay. um, yeah. is triggering this, this work. And, and somebody needs to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, because if one person can do it or a handful, then the rest can follow, can copy, can say, oh, oh, that's how that's mm. done. And so that's really an important piece. Um, I have, has mm. anybody been paying attention to what's, where's the North and South Pole at and, um, and the, the secondary set of poles? Do you know, Deb, or does anybody know? Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Uh, if you look up on the NOAA, uh, NOAA site, NOAA, yeah. um, it's right. got the declination map. So I had to reference this dream. So I looked up the information. I've actually yep. got it written down. So I can send it. I've took notes on this okay. because I was given a, a image of the planet. Um, and yep. before I understood we were working as a dipole, um, which is just a plus or minus bar magnet going through right. the middle of the earth and magnetic fields coming out of it. Um, I was shown Newfoundland right. and Canada and an arc, and I thought it was about a 20 degree arc over the um, over that part of the map coming just down yeah. into the US. So this arc, actually, when I looked it up on the NOAA map, is where the North um, Magnetic Pole is tracking back toward east. So you can actually see over the years how they've tracked and mapped the, yeah, the magnetic it north was. pole. Yeah, it was. It had left yeah. northern Canada and was in yeah. Siberia or something like that. Yeah, well, the last year when I worked on it, it was in, um, I was given the latitudes and longitudes then, and it was in that area. I forget, I have, I have it written down somewhere. Yeah, but that's right. where I had to work last year. This year, I was surprised because I thought I was in Siberia last year, and this yeah. this um, last week it was actually um, uh, just coming out of like the Newfoundland area, going across ways to, back toward Russia. When when I was looking at it, it was it was a real. Um, okay. I've taken notes. I think I'll need to map this out and send it to you because I think it's an important part of what's happening to okay. the planet. Yeah, but I'll, I'll keep it succinct. But I think I had to share it. 
But um, yeah, so, but the main thing That's was funny. that the work that we're doing, we've both been given a hypercube now. Um, yeah. So that's why I needed to have the interpretation because I couldn't get past my physical level to the frequency level. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the hypercube is a tool that mm -hmm. is used in other, in other places. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, we are very slowly um, moving into an awareness you guys are probably among the really um i'm gonna say forefront kind of people <laughs> um because you really are paying attention i talked yesterday with somebody who went out to idaho um Coeur d'Alene, i think it was idaho has a conference once once a year called science technology energy something like that um and so the, these guys out at that conference, they are the cutting edge of science. And one of the things that has grieved me for a very long time is that we, um, on the planet, we here on the earth, we're just busy destroying things left and right. And, and now we're starting to destroy one another. And what I see coming out of that conference and last year, same thing, um, and actually it's been around for a while, but, but not on a big enough scale to have an impact are these tools that you park in the middle of a town and for five miles, radius of five miles in every direction, up, down and around, everything comes into harmony. Crime drops, you know, arguments drop, drug induced arrests drop. Um, the air clears, pollution disappears, uh, all kinds of stuff changes. And, and I first heard about this from, um, what's his name, Sperling out in Colorado. I forget what is, uh, anyway, I had some of his equipment or some of his uh, little gadgets that he had created. Um, and he was kind of hounded because he set these up in Colorado and it cl cleared all the pollution. And then the authorities got upset and said, somebody's messing with things. And they went looking and, um, and they, uh, they gave him a hard time. But in the advanced races, that ability to modify, to affect people's sense of well-being, their health, the health of crops, the weather, animal aggression, um, human aggression, all of that is standard. You, that is just so important. Um, and of course you have to find a, a solar system that's fairly stable. Ours is not very stable. Ours is very unstable, in fact. Um, but um, that whole ability to modify all the houses are constructed. It's interesting, Deb was just saying about um, she was building this house or building this structure and it was hollow down the center and that is perfect description of some of the houses in other solar systems. Um, they are rounded, they have these tremendous energies that they circulate within them. It keeps everybody healthy, keeps everybody young. Um, we, why are we doing that? Why are we busy doing all the crap that we're doing? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my gosh. So um, just be aware that that's, um, that technology was highly featured at the conference. And a couple yeah. of countries are saying, we want that for our entire country. Mm -hmm we we are going to install that technology for our entire country and um and i know the guy who's involved with this stuff and he's passionate about it and he's yeah. busy um you know letting people know and demonstrating what this thing what these um they're kind of like little pancake black boxes <laughs> what they'll do they're, they're like the discs I remember it being in. Um, no, being they're actually a square. 
It's like a cube, oh, okay. but it's a flattened yeah. cube and it's layered. So. Right. I remember it being used about six years ago and they were pounced on, government agencies pounced on them. Yep. Um, because it really, like the weather, they could actually influence, like you said, the hurricanes. They yeah. could influence everything positively without yeah. um, interfering uh, in, yeah. a, in a way that was non-constructive on a large scale. Um, yeah. And um, it was pounced on big time then. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're starting right. to, there are some really good elements here and there within the powers that be, structures, et cetera. Um, and that, I think they will prevail, but we still have some struggling to do. So, um, okay, so let's move on Thank here. Thank you. So, so yeah. the, next, uh, the next person is Susan and, um, Susan and Justin. Justin. Yeah. Ah, Justin, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I think I'm going to ask the questions. Um, Suzanne might add something, I don't know. Go right um, ahead. But one thing I wonder about is, um, I wonder, um, like, who were your teachers, Penny, like, spiritually Ooh. or psychologically? I understand that some of your teachers were, like, Nick Gonzalez and William Kelly, like, in natural, like, yep. natural health. But... Um, who yeah. have been your spiritual teachers? I'm just curious about that. Um, so, that so, so when you have a Kundalini experience or you just awaken slowly, steadily, and you struggle, let's say you meditate for 15 years and then all of a sudden one day you wake up and say, what was I fighting over? What was I struggling to do? Why don't I just relax and be who I am? Then you become your real self. And what you discover inside the self is the inner teacher. In ancient days, it was called the, the Jesus. Um, and so everybody had a Jesus self. And you could add that name, Jesus, to your name when you reach that stage of awakening or development. I had... Um, couple of teachers that were almost all my teachers were not physical they were not humans except for dr gonzalez and dr kelly um and they were amazing <laughs> um but i um connected with this group of teachers uh that they there's no name i just called them the the teachers who were in the crystal school, when you have a full-blown awakening and you have um, something, you uh, everybody comes here for a reason, everybody. And so you end up being faced with your reason for coming here. Um, and then there's certain things that teachers will come around and expose you to, uh, teach you, tell you, or set up an experience that will teach you something and then they grill you about that, et cetera. So my best teachers were um, these um, amazing light beings in the crystal school. Um, they taught me about light and about the eye and the structure of the eye and the structure of the brain and how consciousness worked. And then there were the robes who taught me to look at the globe as my home, not just how <laughs> I'm embarrassed at how small and selfish and self-centered my world was until the ropes came around. You know, the, the most exotic thing I had read up until that point was uh, a bunch of novels, um, you know, and I think, and I make jokes about it, I think I was reading Sweet and Savage Love at the point that the robes showed up. And I never read another romance novel again after that. Uh, they said, we want you to read this book called The Third Wave. And I was like, what? <sighs> yeah, and, and then I started reading um, and then slowly my mind got blown. So um, those, the, the robes were a very patient set of teachers. I was pretty uncooperative um, and pretty, pretty dense and, pr and pretty argumentative. Um, and so, and then there were, um, I had a couple of experiences with Carlos Castaneda after he died. 
and then I had quite a few um, instances with Don Juan or lessons a lot with Don Juan um, that were um, that were also experiences that were either out of body or where he suddenly appeared um, and said, do this, be aware of that, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and he also said, read all the books. My teachings are in those books, even though um, Castaneda had bastardized quite a bit. He said, you will recognize the truth. Um, and so I read and then I would go back and ask him. Um, I had one teacher um, who was teaching psychic development. Um, she was doing, uh, what do you call that um, method? Um, oh gosh, I can't even think of the name of it now. But it was a method of, of doing psychic development. It was started by Jose, um, I forget what his name was now. It's been too long. Jose Stevens? Uh, what? Jose Stevens? No, I don't think that was, it started, I think it was an S. It was the something method, started with an S method. Um, and, and so I took a, one class from her and then I signed up for the second class. And I took that and, and then in that class, she announced that she was leaving. She was moving to California because she said, there is nothing happening in Michigan. These are a bunch of, you know, tight ass rednecks was her description. And I was not, she said, it's all happening in California. And so I felt abandoned. So I thought, well, I'll start teaching because I need somebody to talk to about this. And so the, all the rest of my teachers were my students. Amazing teachers for me. I loved that first group I had. I think I dedicated my first book to them. They were just such a wonderful group. Um, and then the second group was even more, and it just kept getting better and better. And so everything I have learned has been the result of my students asking me, uh, well, what about this? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. So I would go look. I would go researching. I would go studying. I would go talking to some of my teachers. Um, or I would simply get the information because it just comes to you when you want it. If you ask for something, it's going to come. And, and so uh, just amazing. Sometimes it was coming in, the information was coming in when I hadn't even finished forming the question. So it was responding to the intent. And then other times it would take a few days um, Sometimes if it was a big question, I would have a series of three or four or five experiences and I would not know what to do with those. And then all of a sudden I'd have um, a, a moment where it all came together and I saw, oh, that's the answer to that question. That's what that was, oh, that's how, oh. And so then I would record that and, um, and just kept putting pieces together. And then along the way, I kept entering into um, more and more powerful states of consciousness that were that are not describable in human language. It, I mean, you can describe them, but it, the words are not going to convey the power of those experiences. Um, and and then I also have some a uh, lot of connections elsewhere to the Pleiades. Um, and to a few other places as well. And so those have been good teachers as well. And I brought a lot of information with me that was locked up that I was too afraid because I was such a scaredy cat <laughs> that I was too afraid to admit. Even though stuff was happening, I was just like, okay, we're, we're not gonna look at that. Well, we're gonna put that over there and we're gonna leave that alone. So that's the, you know, we all teach each other. That's really the magic of the whole human thing. So keep that in mind, okay? So Aisha just brought in that it was the Josie Silva, because I remember you mentioned Silva, and oh. it was the Silva method, yes. Yeah, that was it, Silva mind control. Silva mind control, yeah. And, it, and all it was really was just this little simple practice of getting quiet, counting yourself down, 
and um, going to look at something or, or, or trying to heal yourself or whatever. Jose was pretty amazing. So yeah, that's the sum total of my, my uh, teaching. And I'm still learning. I still, um, every so often I have an experience that just knocks my sock off, socks off. Um, and I just have one of those. I just had one of those the night before last. So um, it's endless. It, 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 the, the learning process and the expansion is endless. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Can I ask one Gosh. more, Penny? Sure, go ahead. Okay. So one thing I wonder about um, is I feel like I'm able to enter altered states. Yep. So I feel like I understand that and understand how to do it. Yep. But I feel like I don't, from what I can tell, I don't experience other beings as often okay. as you do. Like I wouldn't say that I experience elves in my garden per se. However, okay. I have experienced other beings with ayahuasca. Oh yeah. Um, but I don't experience it just... I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, you have to ask for that. Okay. You, and I made the, it's not a mistake, I, I made the statement um, one day on a walk, and it was a petulant statement. It was a frightened statement. Um, and it was kind of like, if there's any elves out here, say something. And by God, they did. And that just sort of um, you know, I was so upset about what was happening with Saddam Hussein because I thought my son was going to be drafted and end up dead on some other side of the world. And so, um, and I, I was just struggling with this whole thing about elves because I had just read this book by a woman who wrote about divas. And I thought, that's a crock. That is ridiculous. And <laughs> this is after Kundalini. And um, Everything that you are ready for is going to happen. So when I walked out the door of the barn that day and went to the went for a walk to the back of the farm and made that statement, that commanding, demanding, angry, fearful, sassy statement, <laughs> um, voila, they showed up, and and have continued to show up. And one of the things I have said before bears repeating is that I have a very broad range and Kundalini does this. And this is something that you can train yourself to do, um, is moving into very high frequencies and moving into very low frequencies. And, um, and so low frequency is when you close your eyes and you're almost asleep and you're, you know you're in an altered state, but you saw these little visions that kind of come and go through you. Um, you know, you're down at theta at that point. Let me say this also, um, everybody experiences altered states all day, every day, because you have a cycle of consciousness that you go through. Beta is your everyday consciousness used to interact with the world. Then you relax a little bit and then you're in alpha. That's down at a, a frequency, maybe nine, 10, 11, 12 Hertz cycles per second is Hertz. Um, and if you get below that and you start to have these little daydreams, little visions, then you're down in theta. And when you're asleep, sound asleep, and all consciousness is off except for body consciousness, then you will um, be down between zero and four cycles per second. You'll literally flick on and off. So, um, and then if you get excited in the course of the day, you'll move up into high beta or very high beta or gamma. Um, and, and it's, uh, you don't get into gamma very often. Most people don't, but that is something that I have learned how to do. Um, and it's a very powerful, it's a different, uh, it's a different kind of consciousness. Um, and you'll you'll see the world differently when you're in gamma. And so training yourself, um, you know, the, Bob Monroe was a good friend of mine and he 
um, sent me a bunch of discs and said, listen to these, put on some headphones and listen, what do you think of these? And I wrote back and I said to him, well, as far as I'm concerned, they're useless because they're too limiting. And he said, yeah, I know, but for the average person, what do you think of them? And I said, well, okay, in that case, they're good training because you learn to recognize what consciousness is doing at this frequency and what it's doing at that frequency. So you can get their Hemisync um, series and practice. The difficulty that most people have is that they um, put on the headphones and they're listening to the music and they're just starting to get to the frequency and it's all done. The CD is over. And it's like, wow, this is, it's, it, you know, it doesn't give you enough time but it'll give you a taste and you eventually learn to go there immediately um, into that frequency. So, yeah. So for whatever it's worth, anybody who wants to practice going to other frequency sets um, or other frequency levels, it's, it, it's not a big range, but by gosh, it's helpful. So, okay. I have, I have a, a short question or maybe um, it's not okay. so short, but um it's coming up strong. So how do you heal your ancestors and oh, yeah. what, you, what you picked up from them? Um, That's a question that I just want to mention before you answer that, that I plan to ask that to Penny when we meet tomorrow. So I'll have her expand longer. Would that be okay, okay. That, that we did it that way? Because there's still 10 people waiting and we're still like half the hour and that's a okay. nice long okay. <laughs> and that's a really good question so that is yeah and Anne is working on that too so um that's really i'll just say the best way to do it is constellation work if you know about constellation, constellation work yeah yeah um other than that um it's a slow process individual one at a time person um can be done but you have to take good notes and you have to see the whole picture. So yeah, we'll talk about that some more. Thank you. Um, okay. Thanks, thanks da Susan. Daphne. Um, okay. So I just want to mention before Shannon is next, um, to mention okay. that there's a lot of people and we only have an hour left. So if possible, so everybody can ask Penny a okay. question, not to um, go like too many questions. If that's possible. I might be guilty. I might be the guilty one of rattling on too long. So <laughs> I'll try to be a little bit shorter. So, so Shannon, um, you're next and then Trisha. Okay. Go ahead, Shannon. <clears throat> okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, so I'm I'm always I'm looking at transmuting that and looking at ways that I'm see, energy seeking, yeah, leaking. So I was thinking about the story you told um, where you would, when you first had your, your Kundalini activation, you would float out of your body and sit on the roof and kind of yeah. sit there all night because you couldn't sleep. Right. And, I, and I've had other friends who've experienced this as well, who've had Kundalini activation, and when you get back in the body in the morning, you're exhausted. Yeah. So why, why is that? Because... The mind, the consciousness has been away from the body, technically speaking. It, the body should be able to rest. <laughs> but the mind is active in that timeline. And then, and then the other layer is, when it is sleeping, if you're out running around, does that have any uh, impact on the reason that s cells might not be regenerating energy? Absolutely. You're connected to the body. Even though you're out of the body, the body is tracking you and you're tracking the body. So that's part of it. The biggest issue is that when I came back in the morning and like, okay, I guess I got to get up. I didn't have any sleep. Um, the, the biggest issue is that consciousness is always on, uh, always right. for three years. And if you tell yourself, I'm tired at mm -hmm. that point, you have just, given orders to your body. So two things came out of that period. One is that I discovered that I could not be thinking, I'm tired. I, I couldn't do that. Um, the second thing was that I didn't have enough energy to, to get involved in all my usual dramas. 
And so I would be very, very quiet. And in that trying to be quiet and conserve what little energy I had, I discovered the magic of silence. And, and that was when all of the crazy visions and shifting of timelines and being in different places stopped. So mm. that's really, really important. And I would just add that if you have some kind of physical condition and you don't sleep, then the gift in that condition is teaching you to um, change the way that you talk to yourself, your self-talk. No, I sleep and, great. Okay. All right. And I, and I tell myself not to run, you know, to try, and I try and I instruct myself not to run around to, to, to <laughs> regenerate the body. Yeah. yeah. But the subconscious is a funny thing. So, um, no, you have to have periods of absolute inactivity because the body only repairs and restores and regenerates when you're down between zero and four cycles per second. That's called slow wave sleep. And the need for that is cumulative. And if you do not get enough of that, you're going to age. Eventually, so I may not be just be getting deep enough sleep. I may be running around before I hit that. No, you'll cycle. You'll cycle. Um, you'll go down into that, but you have to have at least four of those periods. They last from 20 to 30 minutes mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the night. Oh, I know what you're talking about. If you don't have slow wave, you're going to get up tired. If you had really good slow wave, but then you have these massive difficult dreams, um, very challenging, then you're going to spend a lot of energy in those dreams. The mm -hmm. dream state is your waking state in another place while your body is repairing and restoring. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a dream. Okay? Unless, unless you tell yourself you're tired in the timeline that you are. Don't tell yourself that. The body and then it, let's see. Okay. Yeah. I started with, okay, I have endless mm -hmm. energy, even though I was dragging my ass something fierce. <laughs> so I have endless energy, I am calm and peaceful, and I have an endless supply of energy to draw on, and I actually learned how to draw on that energy. So, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay, good luck with that. So just a, so people know, there was a question about the frequency um, that the, um, a few people asked about that, the frequency uh, generators that were put in cities and the technology of the conference that the yeah. high technology. So people asked for links for that, just so you know, everybody acknowledged that. Okay. It, we'll that. Um, we'll I'll see what we can do with that. Okay. And um, yeah, so, we so can. Trish, Trisha is next. Okay, okay, go ahead, Trish. Okay, you can hear me? Yeah, just fine. <laughs> okay, great, thanks. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. Um, well, I've, I've read six of your books, your Poor Energy and Consciousness and Rose okay. and um, The Elves of Lily Hill Farm. Uh, yeah. This is not part of the question. I just wanted to let you know, because on one of your videos, I heard you say at one point that um, you know you have had contact with elves and in Fintorn, but you didn't know anybody else. And yeah. Michelle Small Wright of Perry Landra. I don't know if you've ever heard of Perry Landra. Oh yeah, actually I have, and I have read her book. Yeah. And had some communication with her through one of my students, who was a student of Michelle. And you know, I really appreciated what she has done. Because yeah. her experience matched a lot of mine. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> so I wanted, yeah, to put that. Yeah, up. I forgot about that. So, yeah. Yeah, she's you. written many books, and she's been doing like for thirty-five years. She spends twelve hours a day in her body here on Earth, and twelve hours a day in a body on like a sister right. to Earth. Yeah. Like, yeah. She's one of those high. Well, I, I shouldn't say that because I don't know her personally, but um, <laughs> my perception of her has been that she's one of the hybrids that is kind of paving the way, opening channels for us to be able to think outside the box. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So my question is about trauma, um, healing trauma. Okay. Um, yeah. For sure, personally for me, my daughter, 
but um, oh, also yeah. in general, you know, I'm a, I'm a, well, I've, I've worked as a massage therapist for like mm-hmm. a lot of years and have explored um, lots of healing genres myself for myself. Yeah. Um, also because I've, you know, interested because I've been like so determined to heal because I really want to have a Kundalini awakening. <laughs> and, and so I'm like so determined, but it's, um, it's really hard. It's really hard yeah. to, um, first of all, it's like understanding why I, I would come into trauma, why I come into that, oh. why I, you know, choose those experiences. Yeah. And, um, you know, what I was understanding as I was talking to, you know, my alien teachers in me was that, um, that we do this because of what you had said about um, it's like it's like a faster way to develop to strengthen well, yeah. our own own fields because when we feel when we're under attack emotionally yeah. or physically when we're under attack it's like um, I guess you know you get more sure about what you think you know who you are it kind of solidifies you maybe in a way. Um, um, let me just say this. So, um, cause, yeah, cause I've had all those kinds of arguments that I went through myself. It comes down to the trauma is almost always a gift. It doesn't appear to be at first. And people usually want to, you know, smack me for, saying that kind of thing if it was really bad trauma for them but there's always always a gift in that and sometimes when the individual is setting up the life if they have this whole background of skills and abilities and insights from other lives they overlook the trauma that they're going to have to go through to get where they want to get and, and think to themselves, I can handle that. And then they get here and the trauma might be worse than what they anticipated or they weren't anticipating any difficulty at all because they thought I can handle that. I can deal with that. Um, I know how to do something, but perception is different when you're off out of a body. So the things that I tell people, I look for the gift um, uh, for instance, um, if you had, let's say, a mother that was just not there for you, what is the lesson? It's almost always some version of having to mother yourself. And, and so that's, you know, just one example. Yes. Um, if somebody beats you um, or rapes you, or you know something like that the gift is almost always the ability to detach and and leave the body and then that becomes a skill it's a heck of a way to get that skill but by god it is quick um you will if you're being raped you will often exit the body immediately um because you can't deal with it otherwise and so then if you've never been out of the body before you'll say well what am I doing out here? (laughs) So, um, so that's what I mean by look for the gift. Um, And then the other thing would be just turn around and look at all the places you've been, that you have developed all the skills you need to deal with the trauma or to, um, you know, heal it or to get over it, or to understand it or, 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 Um, And then the last thing I say is look at what was the gift or what was the teaching that you gave to the individual who was such a nuisance or such a problem in your life because you always teach them something. And sometimes it's just to be aware of how cruel they are. Sometimes it's just to be aware of how cold they are. And they may not get that until they're dead and they're looking back on the life and saying, oh, wow. Um, wow, I really wasn't there for that boy or that that child or whatever. Um, so you you teach and you learn, okay? 
probably the best answer I can give at this point and still save time for other people. Okay. okay. Next, <clears throat> the, right. next, the next person is Yvonne. Oh, okay. All right. Go ahead. Okay. You hear me now? Yep. Hi, everyone. Thank you for doing this. I'm really glad to be here and I'm actually learning a lot. Um, okay. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it quickly. I was really glad that Trisha mentioned the Paralantra processes because it's yeah. something I've been studying for a long time. And one of the things that we do when we do that is when we do multi-level or interdimensional work is we create a vortex of energy called a coning. And in that coning, you invite your higher self, you invite a deva or a spirit of whatever, you invite the members of the, the, the Brotherhood of Light and you invite your higher self. So this is my question. When I was in my clairvoyant training, I had the rare opportunity to see my higher self um, in, the, in, the vision, in the vision state. Mm. And I was blown fucking away. I, 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 I can't, I mean, even if I talk about it, I start to get, and, um, and yeah. because my, my, my sixth chakra is really not, it's not that well trained, I couldn't see clearly, but I saw enough. Yeah. So my question is, um, how do I learn more about my higher self? You know, it's some, some traditions, they call that the solar angel. And there's a lot of bullshit out there that's been written about the higher self. Um, I just want to know who their name, who, who they are, where they came from, how old they are, um, you know, wow. where they're from. You know, I just, I just want to be a nosy, you know, because this is me, right? So yeah. how, how do you, do, other than asking, which I have, and I think I really am nosy, because it's like... <laughs> That's good. That's good. You is want that good? curiosity it, to take you. It? Okay. All right. Yeah. So, okay. How, okay. Do you, how do I, how do I do this? Okay. So, um, there's, you know, it's been a while since I actually have seen that advanced version of myself, but I had the same reaction. Yes. Like, Holy yeah. shit. Excuse yeah, my French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. just an astounding, beautiful, yeah. um, just amazing. There's even, I won't go into it. Yeah, yeah. However, um, that is in existence already for most of us. We come here to make core changes that will benefit that individual. Yes. When you meet that individual or see her or him or who, you know, whatever you happen to, to be in that higher state, um, it's hard to get your mind around what could they possibly need that I could give them. Yes. But that's the, right there is your doorway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you then, um, you address that individual, you should give her a name or, or ask her what the name is and then use whatever name comes to you, whatever you name you get, use it consistently. And then ask, what is it I could do that might help you? And that sets up the relationship, that opens the door, and eventually what happens is um, that observer self that you have set up to get you through the earth experience, um, you merge with that observer self and then uh, that observer self merges with that um, advanced being who has astounding power and consciousness and really doesn't stay here because this is such a difficult atmosphere to be in. Yeah. So, it, but eventually you'll merge with, with that being. So start that process just by saying, hey, you know, I'm down here, what can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> and keep at it, keep yeah. at it and keep notes of yeah. little things you hear because um, yeah. too often we get a message and we say, well, I don't think that's important. And then, you know, six months later, something else happens and we go to write down what we, you know, what happened six months earlier and we go, oh, oh wow, there's, yeah. okay, there's yeah. a thread here yeah. and, and to see that thread. So that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, keep going. That's really quite the gift. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good. Thank you. You've given me some permission. So yeah. Thank, okay. Thank oh yeah. God. Yes. Give it you guys. Give yourself permission to yeah. do what you need to do. Do what you want to do, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, go after it. Yeah. The universe is so 
excited to, to have one more person. And you, I often would think, but it's just, I, there's 8 billion of us here. What could you possibly <laughs> want with me? And, and that doesn't matter. You are absolutely treasured. And so give yourself permission to set up that relationship with that extraordinary intelligence. Yeah. Because um, it's there and wants to be at your service. So yeah. then you be at its beck and call as well. Absolutely. Thank so, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Next. Crystal is next. So, Crystal, you can go ahead. Hi. Okay. Um, that's lovely to have that reminder about um, you know doing what feels right. I just drove down for 1,300 kilometers with my, my son to the snow. So I'm, I'll try and ask my questions, but I'm very tired. Okay. <laughs> Spit so, it off. Um, go ahead. <laughs> great. So um, one of the things that I realize I have, like, um, there's those two parts of the question. Uh, you've told us, talked about the portal of, of in July, now, around now, um, oh, yeah. that you have been coming in sort of June, and a couple of months before that, I kept seeing June as like a light, like spring, um, something. And then you talked about July. And so I realize I've actually been a bit anxious because I'm trying my best to feel that I am making the right decisions to be in that, the, the beautiful timeline, the, you know, the true one that I would like to yeah. be and I'm part of. And um, I realize I'm actually afraid that I'll be, you know, I'll end up in the other timeline that um, I can feel, you know, I'm almost like on the fence, like it could, and it's, it's like, it's drawing me there. And I realize the anxiety is actually, um, I'm, I'm creating a bit of a, a fight. And I, and, okay. and I feel like it's yeah. connected to the other part of my question. Yes, yeah, so um, so finish that part of the question. Okay. Um, how do I relieve that anxiety? Yeah. Um, and, I'm, and I feel like it's partly to do with keep following what feels right. And that's what maybe I'm so scared about because okay. it's quite, yeah. you know, to truly trust that. That's part of my question. Do you want, shall I give pause now or shall I say the other part? Um, no, go ahead and say the other part because they could be related in some way. Yes. So um, over the last year, um, I've really felt it coming to, well, for three years, the last year coming together that right now I'm just, I've hit the point um, in this life that I'm touching upon my mission. I am here. Yeah. And okay. um, my psychic abilities and my healing abilities are just getting stronger yeah. and stronger. Just... Um, I could just touch someone, I know what's wrong with them, or I just look at, I, I realized yesterday when I was driving down, I thought I, I could see aura now, I can see what's in the aura, yeah. and things like that, so, but um, I haven't started the, really, the, the painting, and I'm quite afraid of that, so I'm, um, it's, it's like I'm meeting it, and it's so okay. full on, and I feel quite a, a bit unwell from, from it, like the anxiety, um, and okay, good. I, yeah, you know, not that I want you to suffer, but that's a good sign. Okay, yeah, it's poor. Oh, like right now, I'm I mean, particularly right now, my fatigue and I'm feeling quite quite ill. Um, so gathering energy and everything today, even though I'm excited about the yeah. snow and I'm here with my son, but yeah, my mission. So, um, I, I don't want to get it wrong. It's like the time is now, and I feel you're completely right with that. And I want to, you know, I want to immerse myself as deeply as I can in my mission right now so I can feel fully, it's so satisfying to absolutely um, just be complete with that in this life. I just, I don't want anything else but the full truth. And I am, I want it. And I, I am prepared to experience okay. these difficulties. Um, and I have had those experiences 15 years ago. And I was wondering if that was the start of it. Like when I had a, the Kundalini, I disappeared and when I yep. when I opened up my eyes, I I thought was I someone different then, you know? And then I yeah. came out of this meditation, and um, early morning I went outside and I was invisible. I experienced that I realized I am not here and I am the path and I am the flowers and you know is that what okay. we are as well? So this is the kind of okay. things that have led up to right now, and right. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so let me yeah. say a couple of things before you get to further yeah. into it um it. so because i hear something that i hear from a lot of people um 
So the, the first part of your question is, is really uh, more about, you know, how do I make sure I'm on the right timeline, et cetera, or how do I make sure I'm, I'm in the right group or, or something like that. Um, and the timeline, because you said it was permanent like once you make the decision, and that was yeah. what me out, yeah. Okay, so, so here's the thing that's important to understand. Um, life is very, very beautiful and incredibly messy, especially if you're in a time universe, which we are. This is this place, this is a set of, well, anyway, this is a time universe. So you have to choose what is it you're going to do and how you're going to do that and why you're going to do that and when you're going to do that. And you'll be choosing correctly. And that doesn't mean you're not going to see or experience all that other difficulty out there. You just stay focused on what you want to see, do, contribute, et cetera, et cetera. The mistake that I hear a lot of new age people make is that they're waiting for this place of, they, of perfection where there's no difficulty. That's not earth. That's not of what we have here. Um, and so you end up developing this extraordinary um, resolve or courage or whatever you want to call it. And you just keep going regardless if bombs are falling all around you. You just keep going. Um, and, and that's the thing that I th it's actually ties both of sides of your questions together is that there is not, you're not going to end up in this place of utter joy. And I mean, you can, and it'll last for a few minutes. Um, and there's really no mistake. The, the, there, you're not going to do anything wrong. It's typically going to be a whole hodgepodge of events happening. And what you want, especially for your work, you want to keep an eye on all that stuff that's happening and then pull that in, interpret that and put that on the canvas. That's critical. Um, you know, if you were doing some other thing, developing, a, the, I don't know, a, a machine that <laughs> takes us to Mars or you're trying to, um, you know, develop some sort of of video um, virtual reality thing that transports people into another world temporarily and gives them an experience, you know, that is totally other or, you, you know, like Daphne and I were putting videos up. You have to stay engaged with the craziness around you because that's what you're transforming. Does that make sense? It does. Just that last bit, um, what I was coming, as you said, the bit before, that's what you're transforming. But what am I transforming? Because you're transforming the experience all around you yep. into a, a set of experiences, visual in your case, that somebody can look at and be transformed or be expanded in what they understand about those events. I hope that makes sense. It's starting to make sense. I'm just wondering, can I just catch that? Um, I'm Oh, what was coming just before was you were talking about the other, they can experience other dimensions because that's what I've started to, to do. And I'm now yes. really communicating with the elementals and in the forest and it's, it's very bizarre. And it's like you had said in your book, you know, I feel like I'm making it up, but I'm not like one of them little thing that he's put in the forest. He talked about the worms. And I was like, what do you want worms when he described what he did? And, and I was yeah. walking and they were, and they, in, there was one wiggling gray worm, worm on the pavement and I had to pick it up. And I thought, oh my God, that's, he was talking about that or a gray stone I suddenly found. And so yeah. I was just thinking, but I can't bring, I, sometimes I can't bring myself back. And I feel like, am I here? But yeah, maybe you can. Just, yeah, you will okay. bring yourself back through the act of painting. That's what I'm realizing. And then so those and then, okay, so now I'm realizing I'm having all these experiences because I have to paint and because I'm not painting, I'm feeling unwell because it's clogging up and That's right. I'm not, okay. And so, I experience that exact same thing when I don't write. Okay. I have to write. Otherwise I have no way to get out what I know inside. So is, this is part of what I was saying. I feel like my mission is now it's like I, I'm having experiences yeah. Yeah. And so just with the actual physical thing, is there anything that you can see? Because 
I'm ha I'm having a stream resistance that I can't. I can see it. I can yeah, see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't do it physically. I'm I'm I can't, I'm not sure what's happening. I cannot okay. get the canvas out and actually the paints out. To I know. Move. I know. Okay, because yeah. you're just not ready. Long... You're just not ready yet. When okay. that moment comes and the inspiration comes and this is part of the discipline you you have to grab it otherwise it's gone the words are gone if i don't grab the words sometimes a whole book will come to me complete with all the dialogue and the setting and the narrative and the characters and what they're learning and blah 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 all that stuff if i don't write that down right then it's gone so um and, and that's you just discipline you, so just it's a case did you yeah. feel sad when you weren't writing it? Like, um, like I feel like, how can you get, how, it's one, it's the, that's the work maybe. How you have get to do that. Now? Nobody how, else can tell good. you how to do that. You so that's what it is. Yeah. That's yeah. The, so here's the thing, you guys, nobody yeah. can save you. You have to save yourself. That's if really, I want it, I have to actually do it. Yes. Yes. Take a step, the universe will meet you. If you go halfway, she'll meet you the rest of the way. You have to save yourself. You have to express yourself. You have to, I, they're so, um, it's, you know, it, it, coming to your mission is like having a baby. Ain't nobody gonna have that baby for you. You're gonna do that and you're gonna figure out how to do that all by yourself. And what you're gonna discover in the process is, hmm, you know, something in me knows what to do. And so you just don't fight that and then you'll be okay. All of a sudden. That's, 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 yeah. That's okay. it. That, that's what you're fighting. People are coming, things are coming to, you know, yeah. for that healing kind of thing, but that's more um, sharing the energy without nourishing through the Painting. Okay, um, take a breath, put your arms down, <laughs> take a breath, settle <laughs> down. <laughs> okay. You. Oh, so the port of July, so is there anything to be afraid of? That's how, no. how can we, what you told us all about, you know, the timeline, no. the portal, is that, what is this that? This is exactly? a time where it's time to observe, so, so we're observing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And okay. is, is there is there a time that we can find out um, if if um, when we're in well, there as well? Okay, stay in the present moment. Stay. Okay. You get off into all other times, and you get lost, and you lose yourself. So come back to yourself. Stay in this time and in this moment. This is the place to be, and wherever that is, whatever time that is. So just you know, okay. <laughs> Oh, you get all wound up. So, and you need a nap. You don't have hardly any lights. I, so. I, I, I do my bed. I'm in the, the um, hostel, the room. So I will lie down in a minute. And okay. Listen, yeah. All right. Yeah. We just, okay. Well, let's sleep. move on while you calm yourself. Okay. <laughs> um, but we, you know, can you, when at some point, can you t talk even in a video, can you talk to us a little bit more about the portal you started telling everyone about in your video? Sure. Um, yeah. Like, it, like expand a little bit, like so, so. There's maybe other people have anxiety and what it really means or something. Okay. Before the portal door closes, at some point when you're ready. Thank you. Okay. So All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Take a deep breath. All right. Um, so Casey is next. She's okay. on the phone, so you can't see her hand risen, and then it'll yeah. be Aristotle. Okay. Okay, Casey, go ahead. There she is. Whoops. <laughs> Let me unmute you. Oh, yeah, she's, she's not, not muted. Working. Yeah, there she there. is. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 there she is. Okay. All right. So, um, in like the last, I would say six weeks, I've had three dreams, different, different dates, but, um, they all were the same theme. So they were slightly different, but the theme was the same and it was, me looking for my kids so i have a son and daughter and uh -huh. they're 19 and 16 right now but yeah. what i what's been going on is i in these dreams i'm searching for them and then i find them and they are 
a different age. So when my, cause they're three years apart. So my son was six and my daughter was three. So I, you know, in this dream, I'd run into them and it's, it's a whole different um, oh. past life. And, yeah. and I'm like, no, I don't, but this is them today. I'm searching for them today, right? Their, their current age. Right. And so in the dream that, you know, I'll go, I'll find them three different times in the dream and they're different ages. And so they might be playing with their toys that they, those same toys they had at that age, six and three. And then I might, um, and then I'll stop and I'll say, no, I don't want to stay here. And I go searching again and I'll find them in their ages, um, you know, uh, nine and 12. Um, and that is happening in each of these dreams. That theme is still there. I find them, but they're yeah. not the current age. And so I, and that's happened three times. What does that mean? Okay. So let me ask you a question. If you can answer, um, it would help you a little bit more. So in, it, when you find them in there, say nine and 12, what are they doing in, in that dream at that point in time? Um, usually they were just, you know, enjoying themselves playing together or, you know, they were outside just hanging out together, depending on what age they were. But yeah, uh, okay. there, it wasn't anything significant that they were really doing. The significance was me really wanting to find them. And then I had to uh, uh, turn my back and say, no, I'm not, not going there. Cause it, it was almost as if I was visiting, you know, something from the past. Right. And, uh, yeah, yeah. exactly. Right there. <laughs> so, um, when you have a dream in which you are, um, dealing with your children, most of the time, only once, once in a while, the dream is literal, but most of the time you are dealing with confronting or coming into, um, communication with, or seeing, that you yourself are that age. So, and you're behaving as a six-year-old or a three-year-old or whatever. Um, and and you're, you're playing at some, you said they were three and six and they were playing with their toys, et cetera. Um, that's you and you have a male side and you have a female side. So the female side, since you're a female and if she's older in the dream that says, well, she's a little more developed. The male side might be a little less developed. If the ages are flipped, then the male side might be a little more developed and the female less developed. But that, that almost always says, what happened to my youth? What happened to my ability to play? Yeah. What happened to my uh, ability to, to take up something and, and just have a good time with it? So we seek that which we are watching pass us by <laughs> and so in the dream you know the next dream they're a little bit older and the next dream they're a little bit older what you're dealing with is oh man i don't really want to get older um and and sometimes there's real physical issues that come up but typically it's this emotional um time to survey okay what have i done so far what have i accomplished with what i've had from life so far. So it's a time of, hey, look how, past, how fast time is going past. And, um, and are you doing what you love to do? Mm -hmm. Are you doing what you came here to do, etc. So, yeah. and that's just, uh, <laughs> you know, I remember confronting my age when I was maybe 52. And it, just about having a heart attack. Oh, oh my God, I'm 52 years old. Oh my God, I think I'm gonna die. Um, and then I got all tangled up with death. Oh my God, I'm going to not be. And you wouldn't believe what I went through for just this frantic night, one night. And, and then afterwards it was like, yeah, well, better get to it. <laughs> so yeah. um, we have to, at some point, confront one of two things, either our mortality or our immortality. Most people run away, don't confront either one and end up having to deal with mortality. Um, we're not advanced enough yet, uh, not quite, to get past the mortality thing, but by gosh, some people have done that. And that is something that is waiting for us. We were just talking about that this weekend in the class. 
um, immortality is really um, where we're headed and it's well worth it, well worth it. The wisdom, the power, the, um, the ability to um, move into systems that are eternal, wow. And if you haven't been in one, you wouldn't maybe get how, um, how wonderful, how powerful those systems are. I'm not talking about the way station. I'm talking about other systems where beings do not die. They're out of the time, um, the, the layer of frequencies that have to do with time. So, okay. okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, maybe I'm having, I had the dream because I'm going to turn 40 on Saturday. Oh, you're so young. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it also can be a feeling of, I need to get going with what I came here to do. Time is passing mm -hmm. and I'm distracting myself with playing or using toys or hanging out or whatever. So yeah, okay. yeah keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay. All right. Aristotle, yeah. you up next. Thank you. Hi, Penny. Stuff? Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> I, um, I keep hearing this phrase, the biggest wealth transfer in human history. Oh. I don't know what does that mean and how can I be a part of that? <laughs> uh, which side do you want to be on? The receiving side or the losing side? The receiving side, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, the biggest wealth transfer in history is a um, observation being made by those people who are, who understand how money operates and systems operate. And what they are looking at is the setup by the cabal to get control of everybody's lives and everybody's property and all of their money and to get all those people under their control. So I don't think you want to be on the receiving side because then you would be in the cabal. Okay. But um, the thing that I think is really important um, is an understanding of at least it may be more than just basic but an understanding of the deeper side of systems of finance that are operational here and what has been set in motion uh, doesn't look really good at the moment. Um, and so I was just today reading about the, um, the number of foreclosures and the number of people who are behind in their rent and um, leasing for commercial um, lease space and even school, school properties. Schools are closing left and right. Um, and, and so there's this fight or this question coming up, who does that property belong to that that school sits on? If it's a building, it's pretty clear whoever the owner is. But um, what we're uh, what I would like to see is that people generally get much more educated in terms of their understanding of how finance works, fancy finance, not pay your bills, do your taxes, you know, and keep your nose clean. That's not enough. Um, you have to see the setup as it's happening. And, and I think that's all cabal oriented. What I think we're eventually going to have to deal with is can we really, do we really want to have financial systems in place? Can you even imagine, I've tried to do this a couple of times, can you imagine a world that doesn't have money? Can you imagine a world that doesn't have war, that doesn't have ownership of land? that doesn't have the medical system that we have, that doesn't have the education system that we have, what would that world look like? So right now, the, the big boys, what I call the big boys, um, the ones that are billionaires many times over, um, they're trying to get control of the world so they can shape it the way they think it would be a good world. I'm not so sure they have very much vision, but by God, they have a lot of power. Um, so here we are um, getting set up for thousands of people to lose their homes. And um, wow, and who's gonna own all that? Uh, after the 2008 debacle, 
so much money was owed to China that we had to make a payment. What did we pay with? We paid with land. All of those banks who collected all those foreclosures handed over that land to China and China owns uh, huge chunks of the United States and of other countries as well. Um, Africa, you name it, oh my gosh, um, all over the place. So we are moving into a world in which we better stand up and take part or we're not gonna have any of what we have now. And we aren't gonna have a say in what we'd like to have either. So heads up, heads up there. So hope that, I'm sure that's not what you wanted to hear. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Nora and Tim are up next. And I just want to mention that there's three people left in queue afterwards. So if um, anybody will have questions to, who hasn't asked a question yet, if yeah. you still have something, you could put up your hand and I'll add you to the queue. So if we have time, we can get to you. All right. Good. Yeah. So Nora and Tim. And, and uh, Thomas off. Tommy wants to, he's got a question also. So, okay, Nora and, or Tim, either one. Hi, Tim. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, okay, thanks. This is this is a lot of fun. We we appreciate you doing these every month. Uh, okay. I just really read the robes. Okay, and something about robes. The second time. And clearly, you know, we're in the we're in the rise of corporations, kind of well into the corporations uh, take over everything. Yes. And, um, we're really having a hard time understanding you. I was wondering. You who? Tim. Uh, Tim. Uh, <laughs> you not hear me? Yeah, it's it's really no, distorted. Now I okay. Say say something again. Can you not hear us? We can hear Hello. you, but it's badly, badly distorted. I think it's okay now. To uh, go ahead. Can you not hear us? I uh, know it's still very okay. distorted. We're not I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. Wait. Okay, so. I'll, yeah, I'll see you. What was that? Um, maybe write it in the chat. You don't hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard that. I heard that, but it's not very... I can't make out what you're asking. Okay. Can you hear us? Can you hear us now? It's too distorted. Okay. Oh yeah, Casey suggested you could call in with your phone. Can you hear us now? That's a little better. If you put a rope. Nope. I think he should call in. You should try calling in with yeah. the phone. Yeah. Right in the chat. Okay. Uh, new plan. <laughs> New plan. Call in with your phone. Hello, hello. <laughs> okay. Let, let, yeah, let's I'll move on. Right in the chat. Okay. It's something about the chat. Yeah. Okay. All right, while you type that in, let's go to Sarah. Uh, just hold on, there's, oh, sorry. Just okay. I just want to mention that Lori was there before. I don't know if she purposely oh. took her hand down and also Nicole, but the hands are down. So are you guys okay right, you have a question or? Okay, okay. Lori? Uh, where is Lori? Well, can you hear us? We can We're hear. Right okay. Uh, 
I actually tried to mute, but it's uh, I, for some reason on my thing it's muted. But on, I don't have the number or anything. Uh, I don't know what the number is. Uh, hang on. Somebody's trying to talk here. So hold on. Let's see. Okay, so Sally, I just saw you have a question. Do you know how to raise your okay. hand to put yourself in the queue? <laughs> Otherwise, I'll add your name. We'll call in. Okay, call in. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So Aristotle just put all the numbers in the chat box. Thanks, Aristotle. Oh, we're style. You're just so yeah, good so with quick. that chat box. So quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, so do you want to go to so, Sarah? While we yeah, move? let's go to Sarah and then, um, that'll give, uh, they'll take the pressure off Tim. We'll come back to you, Tim. Okay. So Sarah, go okay. ahead. Okay. Uh, my question is about a symbol that was placed yeah. on my third eye during a shamanic journey. Ooh. Um, yeah, it was quite interesting. Um, she yeah. said that Persephone came in and placed, um, a, it was a triangle with a circle inside and a line. But when I tried to research it, all I get is Harry Potter. And so I was hoping <laughs> maybe you could give me a little more insight to it. Okay, I'm not familiar with that, but I will say a couple things about each one of those, um, each one of those symbols. So um, the triangle is the very first symbol of, of stability that, that we have. Um, so, and it also symbolizes the ability to focus energy in a particular direction, whatever direction you want that to be. So that's really very, very powerful. The circle is the circle, it's called the ring of power. And it's also, if you go back further, the mark of Cain. Cain was not the evil guy that the Bible makes him out to be. Um, Cain was one of the um, men in the goddess cultures or was um, the symbol of the awakened male in the goddess cultures. And so that circle of power um, is one thing, but it's also the circle of immortality. And then the line, um, usually the line is, um, it has a whole bunch of meanings. I could speculate, uh, you know, a couple of different ways, but it typically means your path. Get on your path. What is your path? Um, it's also like a wand of magic, wand of power. Um, and so all those things, when you put them all together, the triangle says, focus your energy, use your wand, and know that the circle or ring of power is yours and that that, that immortality um, can be had. So it um, sounds like it was quite a ceremony. And Persephone is all by itself um, a pretty strong symbol of a woman who escapes um, hell, who escapes from the dead. So uh, that's very good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I should just yeah. ask in the, in the chat, the mark of Cain, is that an X inside a circle? So just what is the mark of Cain? Yeah, the mark of Cain is actually a cross inside a circle, but the circle was um, a very important part of that mark. So, um it really it that's it stood for immortality and power and the power to reach immortality so um yeah that's that's good okay yeah thanks for that tommy okay. so i've um, got Nora and tim's question here oh, okay uh, and chad says in the robes they told you in some ways your real work will not truly begin until everything has yeah. fallen down what are your thoughts yeah. on that um well, a couple things. Um, so I, a couple of things, a couple of misperceptions that I had. One is I thought 
when they said, you know, your work is not going to begin until everything falls down um, and you need to take care of yourself because you'll be much older. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to be 50. Um, so it was like, oh, wow, well, okay. <laughs> 50 past 22 years ago. And here I am. It's like, are we going to get this show on the road or what? And I was also waiting for this very neat fall of everything. Like one day we would wake up and it would all be falling down and I would say, okay, time to begin. And that isn't at all what happened. And I think I've mentioned some of you have been on other tea and consciousness calls in which I talked about this being who appeared, I think it was October of 2018. Um, maybe it was 2017. I'd have to go back and look. But um, you know, he said, is an amazing being. It was not human, um, and, but it was distinctly and obviously E.T. And he had all kinds of these um, waves of light coming out of him that were stunningly beautiful colors, pinks and blues and greens and yellows. And, and he said, it is time for you to be activated again. And, and I was like, oh, and then boom, he was gone. And so it was, I had been asking myself up to that point, you know, it's not looking very good. Uh, should I say something? Is it time to start? Because they had said, stay under the radar or you'll be taken down, taken out. Stay out of the tear down. We need you on the buildup side. And so I was like watching all this stuff that I knew was falling apart and going, ah, you know, somebody is no, nobody's getting it. And then finally, all of a sudden, a whole bunch of people started to get it. And now more and more people are seeing what's really happening. And so, um, so I've been very, very busy for the last two years, um, realizing that the nice clean canvas that I was hoping for <laughs> is not going to happen. Um, it's not going to be as, as smooth and simple as I had thought it was going to be. Um, and, and so it's like, okay, come on, let's start. We have to start talking about, thinking about who are we, we the individuals, um, what did we come here to do, what do we want, and what can we envision to the, the pieces, the parts that make up a new world, because people have different roles to play. And they, um, it, maybe your role is just, you're going to be walking along one day or attend some kind of simple little meeting or tea or get together and you're going to say something and somebody's going to go, oh, wow. And they're going to wake up and get something that they were trying to understand. And they, because you said what you said, all of a sudden it's clear to them what they're doing, what their role is. And so it might not be real dramatic, it might, and that's nice um, if it's not, and it might not be real special, but it's all special. And so for myself at this point in time, I regularly um, kind of collapse and go, ah, it's too late. And then it's kind of like, okay, okay, come on, get yourself back together again um, and keep going. And, and I have had some really wonderful letters from people who have said, oh, wow, thank you. Um, and, and, you know, and so, and they like the conversations between Daphne and I. Daphne asked these five million questions that I would never think of asking. And so I'm, I'm always, one of the big issues for someone um, like myself, not that I wanna set myself apart, but one of the problems, that I have is I'm not a good gauge anymore of what um, what people might need to hear. I'm so far past the beginning stages that I never think of those kinds of questions anymore. So Daphne has asked all these wonderful questions that people who are trying to put all the pieces together would be asking. And I would think, well, everybody knows that. And so I wouldn't say anything. And then it, and so it wouldn't be wouldn't be shared, it wouldn't be understood. And so I've, um, you come to realize that you really need other people. You need them, we need each other um, because it brings out the best in each one of us. So 
that's my thinking on what that whole thing is now. We have fallen apart. That is a message that I got probably two months ago. We have now fallen apart. Um, and it's just not obvious to those who are not looking. And so that was a bit of a disturbance for me. It's like, oh, okay. I thought it would look different, but this is, this is what it is. So it's just gonna get a little more intense um, over the next, um, uh, really a lot more intense, maybe over the next couple of years. But um, by, 20, by the end of 2021, um, we will have hit the worst of it. And by the end of 2022, we're um, starting to pull through. And that's just saying all of those people that, um, the people who are still clinging to the old world, they will be having a great deal of difficulty. You guys, if you're looking at the future and you're on board, you're going to be excited. And you're going to wonder what's wrong with those guys. Was it, why don't they get it? And so that is a, it's a stage that we go through over 2022, um, which is kind of nice because it's, um, it says that there's enough confidence in people to see where they're going and um, how they want to get there, which I think is excellent. So is that helpful? I hope. <laughs> So the, so the next person is Kelly, and she didn't raise her hand because maybe she didn't see the button. Then there's Rachel, oh. Heidi, and Sally, if we still have some time. So okay. I'll let you go. I think, Kelly, your mic is on, so go ahead. Yeah, go okay. ahead, Kelly. Hi, hi honey. Hi. i um, so happy to be here. Um, I just finished reading No Solar. Oh, you good for mentioned. you. And yeah. um, I, I was aware of the wear, way station, um, yeah. but the Umbriel if I'm saying it correctly. Yeah, that's probably the best way to say it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody okay. says it differently. Okay. Um, so I guess um, my question is, I know you had mentioned before um, that, you know, one of the many reasons to work on your consciousness is when you do pass um, and you get to the right. light, you have an opportunity to ask questions. Yes, you do. Or, so I guess um, I'm wondering... Do you, I mean, who, I don't want to say who goes to the Umbria, I guess, or whatever it's called, yeah. but, um, you know, do you have to go to the way station? And, no. Okay. And how do you, I guess, I, I get that it's stuff that you work on while you're alive, but is there like um, future visioning or anything okay. like that? Okay, yeah. Um, so let me say a couple of things for the benefit of everybody. No Solar is a Portuguese title. That no So means our and Lar means lair. And it really means in Portuguese, our home. And it's this amazing book by um, Fernando Xavier, um, who was just this extraordinary uh, medium. And I think he wrote like 40 books. They're almost all in Portuguese, mm -hmm. but about a half a dozen, I think, have been translated into English. And they, um, and the reason that I love them is because they match what I have experienced out there, out of the body. So um, No Solar is the story of this doctor who dies and, um, and gets totally lost until he finally was a sort of, um, I forget if he asks for some help or if he says to himself, there has to be a better way, or if he calls, you know, like, Jesus, where are you? Or something along those lines. I forget what it, what it is. But um, a being shows up and says, come with me and takes him to this um, place where he begins to heal. Um, you do not want to get lost out there in some of those dark places because um, you don't have your logic, you don't have logic like you have here on the planet Earth, and you don't have a sense of past, present, and future. So that is a huge issue, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, so anyway, um, so the, the question is, do we have to go to the way station? We don't want to get lost in that dark land in that land of darkness at all that's um 
Um, you don't even want to spend a minute there. But it, it, here's what I tell people. Before you die, begin to review your life. Mm -hmm. And that should start well before you anticipate any kind of death. Review what have you done? What have you learned? How much time you think you have left? And what could you do with that time to get the most advancement out of your remaining time? That's absolutely so helpful. And then after you do that, think about where do I want to go next? Mm -hmm. What kind of life would I like to have next? And you can experiment and daydream about 20 different lives. Um, if you haven't been anywhere, it's kind of hard to imagine some others. But, um, but there are places that are not caught in time. There are place, there's, there's so many places that people live in this cosmos that it's an uncountable number of places. And um, so let me just say some things off the top of my head. Some places are totally wrapped up in cowboy and Indian type lifestyle. Um, some people are totally wrapped up in um, life, life experiences that have to do with jungle living. Some places are totally wrapped up in equipment um, and manufacturing. And so they go to these dry planets where there's a lot of minerals um, and they sometimes live on the planet and sometimes in the planet, but there's all kinds of places to go. There's places where um, there's very advanced technology and beautiful people and no crime. There's places where it's all crime. And there's a couple places that are so similar to the matrix. If any of you have seen the matrix, it's frightening. It's like, whoa. So whoever put that movie together has been there because <laughs> it's just so similar. Um, and, you know, there's, there's lots of places. So think about what have you learned? What have you done? Did you do what you came here? Did you get as much out of the experience here as you could squeeze out? Can you get a few more years to get to some wisdom? The longer you can prolong your life, the more options you have and the more chances you have to become wise and to step into power. Okay. I cannot emphasize that enough. We have a bunch of kids running the world at this point. Mm -hmm. They hit their peak at 40 or 50 or 60 and they, they don't know what they're doing. And, and, and they're selfish or they're short-sighted or they're ignorant or, 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 or they're greedy. Um, or they're mean. Some of them are mean. Um, so um, think about what kind of system you would like to live in. And any effort you can put into making that happen on this planet qualifies you for an invitation to the kind of life you would like to have elsewhere. Okay. If you can live it at least a little bit here, then you're not a novice. So very, very important. Excellent question, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Penny. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, next person, Rachel? Rachel, and then Heidi, and then Sally. Okay. All right, Rachel, where are you? Let's see here. Oh, there you are. Whoops, hang on. You're not unmuted. There we go. Wouldn't it let me do it myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. The kids running the world uh, was a great segment into my question, which is um, I'm 22 and I yeah. have been in the university system and it's really interesting, especially like waking up through the university system process today. I was told that I was in somewhat anti-Semitic because I don't like George Soros. <laughs> I know, I'm so... Wow. I don't <laughs> okay. Know. Mm. I don't like him either. Well, if somebody wants to bond that to anti-Semitism, he's not honorable. That's quite so. a stretch. Um, my yeah. question is, where are our teachers? I mean, there's so many people my yeah. age who 
have this beautiful passion and and, I know. and anger, a lot of anger. And I, yeah. I just, it's hard for me to believe that everybody's on the teardown side of I things. Know. And I just, I'm like always the youngest person and all of the meditation and all of these things. Like, mm. and I, I, I try to talk about stuff with my peers, but um, I'm a conspiracy theorist you know, whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I so get that. Um, I think one of the things that I tell my students all the time is find as many teachers as you can. The, if you can have, you know, sign up for stuff and ask questions, be like Daphne, <laughs> you know, ask a million questions um, and, and do a lot of reading. Read yeah. some of the old literature. Some of it you'll read and you'll go, what is this about? <laughs> um, other stuff you'll read and be transported. It'll click and you'll get it. And, and then there's good teachers out there. You know, I'm, I continue to teach as much as possible personally and um, in a more public way. Um, there's a couple of other good teachers out there that inspire people. Um, What's his name? Somebody mentioned him uh, just a little bit ago. There's uh, actually there's old teachers that are no longer with us, but their teachers, their people are still teaching their stuff. Um, so there's some of that. I'm ouch. I'm referring to um, uh, what's his name? Jose Silva, uh, for example. There's um, there's just there's teachers around, and if you can sign up for a group, or even start a group like I did when I was thirty, what thirty two, <laughs> thirty three, I just need some people that I can talk with, um, and so I put this ad in the paper that said psychic development classes. I didn't know psychic development from a hole in the ground, um, but. I had this massive set of experiences that would not quit and that I just thought if I could find somebody to talk with about it, I could figure some of it out. So I learned by teaching. So that's a very valid way as well. So, so maybe your path is to become a teacher in order to learn. So, yeah, because that was my other part of the question was, do I need to be trying to show people, my peers, things I mean probably one out of 50 people that I talk about your writings with actually goes and looks at it yeah and, you know that's about average <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, uh, yeah and wondering if it's like that time where you're saying to step back or yeah or well I more no you can just continue to introduce people those that can hear or that are ready will take some action those that aren't ready, it goes into this bank in the back of their mind. And later on, maybe a year, two years, five years, they'll come back and say, yeah, I have this issue. And you, you can say, well, you know, you ought to do some reading or you ought to do some, you know, belong to a sign up for a group and, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, what I have found is that if you pick a day and a time and you open your door, people show up. So, and, and all of you, uh, if you have neighbors or friends that um, seem lost, invite them for dinner and say, let's talk about what's going on in the world. And then don't try to tell them anything. Listen, what do people need more than anything else right now? They need to be heard. They need to be allowed to speak. They need to be able to say what they think and what they feel. And for you to just go, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and that just the act of listening starts the process for them of being heard. And who is it that actually gets heard? They hear themselves. Mm. That's the most important piece. So you can invite people in to do that. It's a beautiful gift for people. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Who's next? Heidi? Heidi. Okay. Heidi, go for it. 
Hey, Penny. Um, I had two questions. Uh, okay. Both one is, how do you get back in the body once you're out of it? Is there, uh, do you need to leave breadcrumbs or is it just an intention that you just <laughs> back there? Um, you can't really get lost from the body without the intention to do so. Um, you are hooked to that body. You're going to slam back into it if something startles you. You're going to drift back into it. You may, if you've been out for a long period of time, you may end up coming back and then sort of <laughs> having this feeling of where am I, even though you're very familiar with where you are, there's a sense of being, having just been dislocated, which is actually true. Um, you, you're not gonna lose your body. So much m the opposite. The bigger challenge is how to get out of it. Okay. Okay, and then the other question is, um, when the one gal was talking about sleeping and being out of her body, um, yeah. I had the thought of when I would used to work as a firefighter, we'd be up all night. And I discovered if I um, would yeah. come back and just meditate and breathe and yeah. just do that for say an hour, I would feel so much more refreshed even though I hadn't yeah. really slept. So my question is, is yeah. what is your brain doing? Is it going into theta? Is it going down? Like, is that why my body feels more refreshed when I'm doing that? Because I still do that and I feel amazing when I can't sleep. I just Yeah. Know. Yeah. Actually, um, re, uh, research has shown that five minutes down in theta is about equal to an hour and a half nap. Um, and one of the things that this is one of the things actually, so thank you for bringing this up that I was thinking I wanted to say tonight was learn to take in energy directly from the universe around you. Um, get into a meditative kind of position or just a position where you can look out the window and enjoy, I don't know, we can see the fields here, <laughs> or maybe you can see a forest or ocean or whatever, but breathe in, try to relax and, and expand your body. Try to expand your feeling sense so that it's actually outside the boundary of your skin. Um, and, and try to then take in energy directly from the source. If you, um, sometimes like when I don't sleep at night, I roll over onto my back and I, um, and I, I start this breath work and it's, um, and I may not sleep all night. And, and the breath work is very intense and I'll breathe into something, my heart or my spine or my kidney or one of my ovaries or my big toe or my knee or whatever. Um, and, and I just move through the body. And once I start and one spot actually heals, then it feels like that's out of alignment somehow and, and some other spot needs to be fixed now so that the two are in harmony. And by the time you're done, you've moved through the whole body and you have taken in energy from source, renewed yourself completely. And, and even though you may only end up with two hours of sleep, it's like you had six or seven or eight hours. So um, that's a very, very powerful way. And I think that's, um, when I was talking before, telling somebody, maybe it was Rosemary, um, practice the telepathy, the, the clairaudience, the clairvoyance, the clairsentience. Also, practice feeding yourself directly from source. That is one of the things that the immortals do, is that they, they don't hardly ever eat at all. <laughs> um, because they're maintaining themselves in such alignment with that source material that they don't need to eat. So, um, yeah, is that helpful? Hopefully. Okay. All right, who else? There was somebody else? One yes. more? Uh, Sally, Sally had a question. Oh, Sally, go, go for it. Hi. Um, yeah. I think I heard you say a few teas ago that you had done a look see, and you know I live in Tucson, Arizona, yeah, and that something was going to be happening in Arizona that might not be so great because we're having massive fires and we're having um, we're having uh, 
like the chemtrails are back and they're, they look different, but I know they're chemtrails. They've been gone for a while and they're actually dissolving our monsoons and bringing in these, these sandstorms that are having lightning in them and they're just starting fires. And you just watch it. It is so wow. And um, <sighs> so I wanted to know if you'd seen anything because I'm, you know. Uh, you know, um, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what I said but I do remember having this feeling, that, um, and I'll just kind of say it like I had it, like there was going to be an attempt to make an easy exit out the southern border very difficult. Um, and so I'll just leave it at that for now. But um, one of the things that I had just uh, today was talking to somebody, um, and they were saying, well, you said... Uh, there was going to be this difficulty um, with the grain crops, perhaps, or with crops in the southeast USA. And I had just been thinking about that and thinking, you know, they're on track to have one of their biggest crops ever. And so what I had seen was it was really droughty and there was the, the massive amount of rains and flooding. So what dawned on me today was I, in looking at that, um, either I was absolutely wrong in terms of that's not what's going to happen in the Southeast USA, or I was wrong in assuming that I was looking at the USA because two things came to, um, have come to my attention. And one is the massive amount of flooding in the Southeast of China and the loss of all their food crops that are being grown in East Africa through the locusts and the droughts there. So that is like, oh, wow. Um, so sometimes I'll see something and I'll get the location wrong. But um, that, I mean, that it brought that up because that may apply with your, um, you know, your spot down there. But the feeling that I had in terms of Arizona was they're going to try and block exits from from Arizona into Mexico okay so yeah okay so any other comments or questions anybody else have anything else they want to say we're a little bit over but um you know if you have anything you want to add real quick then go ahead and add it yeah Christelle Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know here. There we go. Okay. Oh yes, thank you. Um, the thing you you um just um describing the uh, exercise, the meditation exercise. Yeah. You're talking about when you go beyond your skin. I'm just wondering if this is what I used to do because maybe I should redo do it again and what it what it was I was doing. So when we called it recycling, when I would put a uh, lie down my back put a blindfold mm -hmm. on, earplugs in, and listen to all the, the different buzzing sounds, the different you know, vibrations, yeah. high yeah. to low. So I would imagine I would disappear into the sounds and the dots, and so then the whole body would be buzzing, and it, it would be like, um, yeah. buzzing, buzzing. And then after quite a while, when I could event drop in, um, I was aware of my body breathing, and I would be in that, the buzzing zone, and watching the conversations from the day go, and sometimes like instead of not consciously so thinking or the breath go to that part of the body, but to be aware of a pain coming or whatever it was and, and disappearing while the um, slightly orgasmic energy would be flowing through my body. And um, after, I used to do this every morning and every night for half an hour, but if I was in a shopping mall or out or something and I felt no, I needed to do it. Sometimes it could take yeah. up to two hours and I feel completely refreshed. Yeah. Is that what it is you're describing? Or what, yeah. you know, when you're fully that large, the, the buzzing, is the buzzing? Our the buzzing is just a sign that you have entered into <laughs> another frequency. Um, uh, that buzzing sound is so common. Um, don't get distracted by that, but the exchange energy that you're doing is correct so keep on practicing that, that, that is that what you were describing to us like when yeah. you change the energy is that is that the source refreshing us is that kind yes. of yes yes that that is a useful thing to do again because i'm familiar with it yes 
or sometimes it takes a long time so maybe yes. the breathing thing would <laughs> make it quicker because that's what yeah. I've been doing in the mornings and I go back to sleep I, I pay attention to each yeah. chakra and I pay attention, to, pay attention to the space around the chakra and okay. I fall asleep and every time I come back I go to which one was I at or this one and okay is that kind of what you're talking about yeah okay um and I just um when you when earlier when you said um and I think I'm understanding what you mean when you said when we if we're what comes up next for us in our consciousness is yeah. it might we feel we're doing what we're meant to be doing but when something comes up it's um if it's fatigue or, or physical discomfort we are still right on our path but that's what we have to deal with next and there's a frustration because we want it to be a certain way but the thing that looks like the certain way isn't that this is the truth right now right is that what it means that and yes. that means we are on the right timeline yes yeah don't get concerned about timelines um oh. yeah you're gonna get yourself all tangled up you can't be worried about what's correct i mean that's the same thing as the christians or the muslims um asking am i doing it right am i doing it right um that's not you end up being too, too concerned about doing it right and, and you miss the the richness and you miss the target so well, then how do we know it's right you know, you know you will know you have i'll tell you what I had to learn to trust myself. You, each of you will have to learn to trust yourself. That is so important. So um, it's a slow Nicole process. A, oops, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, one tiny bit more. Uh, hey, hang I, on, I, I don't want to go on too long because yeah. we're already over and I don't yes. want to keep people unless they want to stay. Just, it's just what you, you're saying about when you say, if we're not ready for something, it's just what we're experiencing is leading to that. For example, what you were just saying, or for example, if I'm saying I'm not ready to do those paintings, I have to experience what I'm experiencing now, which will lead to yes. that, which I'm wanting. That's it. Yes, Thanks. exactly. Okay. Okay. So I think Nicole still has a question. She hasn't asked a question yet. Um, oh. just, Nicole? Yeah. Very quickly though. <laughs> um, first okay. of all, I'm, I'm probably not as far along in my spiritual development as a lot of yeah. folks here. This, you know. <laughs> Don't um, worry about it. <laughs> well, it's weird because it probably started when I was a small child uh, and that's kind of yeah. where the gist of this is because you know, I know that you said that the world is being run by kids and we really don't start <laughs> maturing until age 30, 40 ish. Um, 50. Oh, well, 50, good, because I'm 50. 50. Yeah, so, it takes 50 years to figure out how this place works and be able to work it well and smoothly. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm six years old, basically. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's so, okay. So I evidently, though, was very prolific when I was speaking to an imaginary friend as a child. Oh, and very good. So how do, yeah, his name was Johnny. Um, my in nursery school, my parents, the teachers said, I just want to know who is this Johnny person that Nicole keeps talking to? And they just laughed and said, that's her imaginary friend. So are those <laughs> guides? Are we talking to our other self? Who is the imaginary friend? Those are other beings that you have a capacity to see, which is something right off the bat says that you have an expanded range of capacities in, mm -hmm. in your ability to access and see different frequencies of light. Mm -hmm. So that's a wonderful gift. You should probably practice that. I, you don't scare yourself. But, oh, I won't. And um, I, I, I know I can see energy. I'm, I'm working yeah. with crystals. I'm learning crystal healing. And I have a lot of gut reaction kind of things. I, and people think I'm crazy, but I actually picked the winning combination of lottery numbers three times, didn't buy the ticket. <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> it, it became a game or something. It's like, yeah. oh, let's see if I can do this, you know? And I picked them and I'm like, yeah, I don't need, you know, $240 yeah. million. Dollars, so. Oh. <laughs> Okay, you pick them. We'll spend the money for you, okay? That's what everybody always says. I don't have control over it. I did it three times over the course of 10 years. And yeah. 
you just never know. But yeah, you know what? That's a really an important point. Um, a lot of times when we're trying to do something, nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. And then when we're least expecting it, when we're, you know, doing something silly, then there's the information and we don't act on it because we're just not in that mindset right then. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that was okay. it. Just basically, I just want to say I, I have enjoyed this immensely. It's my first time here and I oh, won't okay. be my last. So thank you so All much. All right. I'm glad you came. I'm glad Me you joined too. us. So, so Penny, Jackie, do you have a question? Oh, maybe not. I okay. thought maybe Jackie had a question. So uh, Casey wrote in the in the text box, but I think we can answer this question tomorrow when I meet with you and we could put it online. So what was your dream or message you got a couple of nights ago? So since we're doing the look-see, oh. do you want to combine that or do you want to just talk about it here? It wasn't a dream. <laughs> so it was a huge lesson, embarrassing. Um, it was, it, it's long and yeah, it'd be way too long here. Um, and I'm still processing it and I'm still embarrassed by it and I'm still mortified <laughs> in so many ways. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So just, it, it wasn't a dream. It was a communication from my people. And so it was uh, kind of uh, really took me down a piece or two. So um, if I can get it together, I'll share it with you at some point. Okay. So thanks for asking. Thanks for caring. <laughs> Gosh. So let's see. Any other questions that we missed here? Who's this Rachel? Oh yeah. Such as youth, but it's weird when your parents think you're not. Oh yeah. It's worse when your kids think you're a nut. So my kids are finally starting to get what I've been talking about for so many years. So, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, who's this? <laughs> Tommy, did you really dream about the marshmallow? <laughs> are you joking? <laughs> when I woke up, my pillow was gone. <laughs> okay. Oh my. All right. Yep, we are seed planters. Okie doke. Um, all right. Well, let me let you all go unless you have something you need to to share or say. Um, I'm, I need to get going myself. My throat is done for after four days of the, of teaching. I have so enjoyed tonight. I really liked your questions, all of you. So um, take care. Take care. Love you all. <laughs> all right.